All right, it is time now for our interactive segment and we are joined by Shiro Okobi, who is the commercial director at Mevida Homes. And she's here to have a conversation with us uh, in the topic of housing and mixed use development. Good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Let's just begin from the onset, from the, from the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, mixed use development, housing, what, what is that? So a mixed use development is a, deve a development that allows for synergies of uses um, across different types of real estate assets. So you'll find a mix of commercial, residential, retail, sometimes industrial, um, all providing for um, accessibility and convenience in one location. Okay, so that would be for us a place with houses Correct. that has what? A place with houses that has access to your office, has access to your bank, has access to your shopping centers, access to your medical services, um, usually within walking distance. Um, so that's the idea of the access, the ease of access within walking distance. Right. And what would be, what would be the appeal? for this mixed use development in Kenya? So one of the primary appeals, um, at least in Kenya, is obviously the reduced need um, of vehicles. When you have everything within access, is easily accessible, um, is convenient to you, um, there's that uh, lower dependence on vehicles and inherently creates a more active, healthy lifestyle because you're walking everywhere. Um, I think it also allows for um, you know, a segment of the community to be able to gather to where they live, where they work, um, where they play, um, creating that more community um, sense, more of a vibrant community. And what you find also with mixed developments, the developers behind these types of developments are normally of a higher caliber. So you have a better grade of um, assets. So as an investor, for example, investing in a mixed development, we, you have what we call an investment grade opportunity, um, all within one location. Um, another great um, offering with mixed use developments is through the synergies, um, you can take advantage of um, some of the uh, dependencies you find between the different assets. So for example, if you have your office next to your residential, you have your immediate tenant, uh, tenant demand right there. Uh, so for an investor, that's a great offering. Um, you're able to play into the yield, um, having that um, access to your tenant demand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're coming out of a pandemic, kind of a post-pandemic era. Mm -hmm. And how is the housing sector picking up after the coronavirus pandemic? So I, th I think we've all gone through what we are, we are terming the COVID fatigue. Um, you know, Kenyans are very resilient. Um, and it's, it's, it's business, you know, business as usual. Um, as developers, we are really anxious to um, pick up where we left off. Uh, and you're seeing that. You're seeing the revived energy uh, from both sides of the table, from the developer side and also from the demand side. Um, so there's definitely a, a desire to get the economy uh, moving again, um, get back to business, um, coming from that hall that we had with COVID. Mm -hmm. And also just, you know, coming from the COVID and then now we are going into an election. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of people would be, you know, let's wait and see and then we will invest. So how is that affecting housing? So, I mean, we find two types of um, buyers within our market. Um, you, you definitely have uh, people who are entrenched locally. Um, so those of us who are local to this market, um, we've been through this cycle before. I mean, we've been through election periods before. Um, there's also that desire to kind of revive the industry coming out of COVID. Um, so within that, um, within that segment of people who are um, used to, the, to this type of arena, um, we're not seeing much movement. Um, we are seeing uh, continued uh, demand from that segment of the market. Um, understandably, there is a small segment that are wait and see. Um, but uh, I think having had a history of elections before, successful elections before, there's less of that. There's less of that concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about Mivida Homes. Mm -hmm. Let's go straight into that. This is a, a phase one of a three phase project. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. Great, uh, yeah, Mivida is a joint venture mm -hmm. uh, between um, leading industry uh, developer Actus 
and an Indian conglomerate, Shapoji Palonji Real Estate, or SPRI. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a middle income platform that answers the, the, you know, the question um, of real quality middle income housing within our sector, um, which is a real need. Um, and that's, that's the space we're playing in. So we are successfully completing our first project at Garden City, Mivida at Garden City, on time this month and planning to deliver in the following month. And it's phase one of our three phase project. Uh, but being a platform, uh, we are going to grow the brand to Nairobi and its environs. Okay, so this, this phase one, um, give us a picture of that. How does that look like? Is it complete? Have mm -hmm. you put in, you know, you've mentioned a shopping center, schools, ETC, what, what can people find in there? Yeah, great question. So Mivida uh, project at Garden City actually sits on four acres of land within Garden City. Mm -hmm. um, so we're offering a typology of one bedrooms, two bedroom and three bedroom apartments. Um, and we've dedicated part of our ethos to provide an urban green living space. We've, we've um, dedicated an acre uh, to green living. So we're talking about you know, jogging tracks, swimming facilities, um, very family friendly environment with children playgrounds. Um, so it's essentially creating a city within a city, uh, Garden City already being a thriving mm -hmm. uh, mixed-use city as it is. Mivida is, um, is serving to provide a residential, a home mm -hmm. for people within that urban space. Okay. There have also been assertions that most urban centers have an oversupply of office space. And, uh, you know, as much as it is very appealing, um, how affordable is it in comparison to what is there in the market? Correct. Um, so, uh, I mean, the commercial space has seen, um, you know, increase in supply. Um, but what you find, it's normally very um, centralized. You know, you have centralized office spaces in your um, Westland nodes, uh, your Upper Hill nodes. And there are still a lot of areas that uh, do demand that kind of um, facilities mm -hmm. that are underserved. A good example being the thicker, the corridor of the thicker superhighway, where you don't have that kind of commercial offering, um, greater office space as it may, um, within easy access to CBD, to the airport. Um, so as much as there's a supply, it's very centralized, and there's an opportunity for developers, which we've, which we've uh, leveraged, to provide that commercial offering in underserved areas. Okay. So in closing, what would be your closing remarks? Um, I think real estate is a very interesting space right now. Um, it's a huge contributor to our economy, so it's not only interesting but a very important space. Um, and developers are working uh, very hard to, you know, create or to maintain um, that energy within our within our industry. You know, with the rising cost of uh, materials, um, you know, additional, um, you know fees being levied, um, there's a lot of adverse market effects that uh, developers are facing. Mm -hmm. um, but what we found is, um, you know, what we're trying to employ is best practices um, to soften the, the, the impact so that we are still able to provide that quality product to our, to our buyers, still able to um, provide that um, whatever cost savings we can achieve passes along to our buyers. Um, so I think we are hopeful within the real estate space. Um, and continue, we want to continue to see how it unfolds during, through the year. Okay.